Colby was born a month early. Um, the most perfect, beautiful little boy. His sisters were thrilled, we were happy. Um, but pretty much straight away, his doctor heard a, um, a heart murmur and said, nothing to worry about, but if it doesn't go away in the first month of his life, we should see a cardiologist. It was really when Colby had turned eight, that's when they knew that his heart was pumping inefficiently, and that's when we knew that he had to uh, undergo his first heart surgery. He was really failing to thrive. His growth had stopped. He was very pale, um, very, very tired. Um, he would even, on the playground, when he was running and playing with his friends, he would just suddenly lie down because he was so puffed out, he couldn't keep going. All you want to do is stand in their place, take their pain. Um, but for an eight-year-old boy who could start to understand about life and death, it was very, very difficult and frightening um, for all of us leading up to the first surgery. We sat down as a family around a little round table and we, we played Colby's favourite card game for four or five hours while we waited for him to come out of surgery. Um, and he did come out and um, he, he came out. They had repaired the heart valve. I was in the operating room for, for six hours in hospital for one week and in recovery for three months away from school. So then 10 months later, or four days after my birthday, I was told that I had to have another open heart surgery. I got afraid and I didn't want that to happen. So I tried to hide, I tried to run. Well, I hope no one has to go through that. And that was really the hardest day of our life was having to tell him that he had to have a second heart surgery. He'd been through one. He, he, he didn't know how hard it was going to be going into that, so he couldn't feel the feelings he was feeling now. But so soon after the first surgery, to be told you have to go through that again was heart-wrenching. We've been supporting the American Heart Association for the last 20 years. Um, ironically, 10 years into that, we, or eight years into that, we actually had a baby who had heart disease. I did the American Heart Association Heart Walk every year. I did Go Red Luncheon for them, and I made a survivor video. There was a fundraiser here. I raised $1,000 in my backyard in like a little tent showing my scar. It makes me feel good when I know I'm helping other people. And now I want to do something again, and that's how the wine came along. Our whole life revolves around wine. So it wasn't a surprise to me when Colby, um, around about a year ago, came to me and asked me, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm how's wine made? Can we make a wine together? Colby then came back to me about three months later and he said, do you think the wine is going to be good enough to sell? And uh, I said to him, you know, I think, I think we can make some good wine and yes, we can sell it. And I wasn't really sure where Colby was going with this. And then he said, uh, what about if we donated the, the profits to Heart Research? I just want to help other kids. I love the idea that just out of a, a small little inspiration has come something that's really meaningful and I've seen Colby developing confidence already and because this is something that he's behind and he's pushing and he's supporting. It's a great wine. It's probably one of the best wines I've ever made um, because it's a whole new dimension. I've been a winemaker for 30 years and I've done a lot of blending in my life and blended some really good wines. But when I did Colby Red, um, it took on a third dimension. And um, that third dimension was really thinking about Colby, his operation, and what this blend could mean, not just to us as, as a family, but to hopefully millions of other people in the world. If I were to look 20 years on from now and look back at my winemaking career, if I were to look at highlights, I know I'm going to look back that Colby Red was one of those. Our initial goal is $100,000, which still blows me away to think that we can 
as a family that, are, that we think that we can do that. Um, and then from there, it's a quarter of a million dollars and the sky's the limit. So we really hope that uh, Colby Red is a huge success. So where will the money go? It will all go to help heart research. And uh, Colby definitely has said quite clearly that um, he would like it to go to help others so they don't have to go through what he went through. So the majority of, of the funds will go to the American Heart Association. And I think, you know, probably the reason why Colby's alive today is because of the money that was donated by people years and years ago. Colby would like to give some money to St. Jude's Medical Foundation. Um, St. Jude's were the people that made his heart valve. And uh, then we'd also like to keep some money um, to help individual causes um, when they become apparent that people might be in need. Heart research is, is what will hopefully save Colby from having to have another open heart surgery. Hopefully in um, whenever he needs intervention again, um, it will be a lot, lot less invasive. I think that this is going to be a wonderful project. We're going to help a lot of people. But for me, I'm just really thankful that this project has done so much for my son already. And you can uh, you can feel sad about everything or you can get out and make a difference. And I think Colby's getting out and making a difference. Mm -hmm.